yesterday, and a lot like tomorrow, is neither good nor bad. You see, the day that the Lord has made is the day the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it if we choose to, but whether it's a good day or a bad day, whether it's a beginning of a day or an end of a day, whether it's something that you can uh, write on your calendar that, hey, I had a great day, or thank God it is Monday or Tuesday or Saturday or Sunday or Friday. That all really boils down to you because your perspective on the day has already been given a directive from the Word of God. You've been told that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The reason why we can rejoice and be glad in it is because we've been given another day, another opportunity. God could terminate all days anytime He wants to. There's nothing that stops Him, even though we may have a recorded Word of God. He is not limited by His Word. God is God. God can do anything He wants to. Now, some people that have this sovereignty of God issue that they want to make God fit into a box of their own understanding could quote unquote say, well, God can't do it unless he first reveals it to his prophets or he can't do anything that he has already said in his word. Oh, be careful. <laughs> you may find yourself surprised at what God can do and still fulfill his word completely and perfectly. So, being that God is God and he's the creator of all, I don't argue with him much about what he can or can't do since he created me. But what I do is in response to what he has said, I can make this day a day I choose to honor God in. I choose to accept what God is bringing me this day and recognize what his will is for today, and that's to rejoice. God wants us not to be singing all the time, not to be, you know, smiley all the time or peaceful per se all the time. He wants us to choose in the midst of our sorrows sometimes, in the midst of our sufferings sometimes, in the very place where we think that we're having a bad day. He wants us to choose to rejoice in our bad day as well as our good day because this is the day that the Lord has made. Every day you're alive, and you're going to live forever, so you might as well get over the idea of worrying about death or fearing suffering or some kind of consternation of your soulful experience. And let your spirit guide, meaning your spirit, period, guide you in a way to lead you to the Word of God so you know and have an expectancy about what the future brings for you, eternity. That way you don't fear death and you don't have a worry about what's going to happen or you don't have to, you know, like some Christians I know, run out and go, oh my God, I have to store up food, I have to buy a gun, I have to get things ready because the end has come. No, you don't. <laughs> Quite frankly, if I said to my Father in heaven, Lord, you know, you promised that you would provide for all my needs according to your riches and glory. You told Elijah you know, that you didn't have to worry about, you know, your protection, that you could take care of it because you have angels behind the enemies of God, you know, just waiting to slaughter them. That you even sent Elijah food from crows. Well, Lord, right now I just want you to bring me some food with a sparrow. You know, I've had a robin bring me food. No, seriously, I, I have it in my living area, in my kitchen. 
my wife and I think it's kind of funny, but you know, we, we recognize it from the Lord, you know. And you can take this with a grain of salt, or you can take it with an ounce of faith, or you can take it from wherever you want to go with it. I don't care. It was a deep thing between the Lord and I. But a robin brought me a peanut. A full shell peanut. Yeah, you know, he came over and was knocking on it, and then he left, you know, and left the peanut behind. That's food. I broke it open, and I was thinking about eating it. <laughs> but you see, God really can't bring you food from birds. He can do anything he chooses to do. And I've been so poor at times that I, I was at my last meal and I hadn't eaten. And I saw, believe it or not, a fully baked cake sitting on a wall. Fully baked, remember this, fully baked cake sitting on a wall. Well, I went and got it. <laughs> Later, I learned that you know it's a Jewish custom that you know you put you know for Shabbos you put out certain foods you know for the poor, and that you know just like the gleanings for Ruth you know where she was going behind Boaz's harvesters you know and gleaning out food and he saw her and said you know well give her a little extra you know make sure you leave some behind for her to take home to her, her mother. That's kind of what they do in Israel sometimes you know some of the Orthodox anyways. And that's what happened to me one time when I was starving in Jerusalem. You know, I mean, I was starving. Then another time I saw what they did with the bread after Shabbos, you know, that's been baked for Shabbos. They take this big bag, you know, and they, they get ready to throw it away, you know, and then they tie it up and they set it next to where it's going to be thrown away because they know the poor people might come and take it. So we, man, I was like chomping and stomping on my cake that I got during Shabbos and I was eating... Uh, bread, literally, after I, yeah, after Shabbos. It was kind of neat, you know. I was like, man, okay, I can make it. <laughs> it was a tough time to start with. But my point being is this. Those days, though they were challenging, I was never without God providing. And likewise, today, whatever it is you're going through, you can rejoice and be glad in it. You can rejoice because... God is with you. As a Christian, you're the only one that has the choice. Non-Christians don't have a choice. They have to say, thank God it's Friday, or thank God it's Monday, or whatever it may be, or they hate Monday or hump day on Wednesday, because they don't have a choice. They're ruled by their emotions. They're controlled by their feelings. A Christian is not, or doesn't have to be. He can make a choice to not be ruled by his emotions. And that's the problem between a non-Christian and a Christian. That's why there's a war going on, because a Christian can just enjoy every day, and a non-Christian can't. It's a bad day you know, for them sometimes, or it's a good day for them sometimes. It's never every day is a day the Lord has made to rejoice and be glad in. That's the issue that you find yourself in when you make choices that are good for you or you determine for yourself choices that are bad for you. How your day turns out really was up to you. God has already provided his direction for you to go in this, the day that he has made. And he has chosen for your direction to be glad in it. He has chosen for you to use your choice and freedom of choice, freedom of will to follow his will in the way that you should go. And that's what Jesus meant by the way, to follow his way for abundant life. Abundancy means to have a fullness, fullness of joy, fullness of peace, fullness of sorrow, fullness of suffering, to bring up into you the complete fullness of whatever cup you've chosen to drink from today. My cup is full of appreciation for coffee today, <laughs> at least at this moment. Later, it may be the cup of sorrows or the cup of languishing or some other emotion that I may sip from, but I may not drink all the drinks there. So today, whatever it is that you think somehow has gotten out of your way you know, or caused you to go astray, then get back to the way that God wants you to be, which is to accept the day as it is. It's not a good day. It's not a bad day. It is the day the Lord has made. Now, I don't know about you. I 
I like that. It kind of reassures me. It kind of gives me a confidence. It kind of lets me know that God is in control. And I certainly am not. Are you?